There's a new street fighter on your windowsill. The weapon is peace. The word is chill. Hey there, guys. Welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior. And this is our second quarterly Q&A episode for the year. I thought I would put the message out to Instagram. What cues do you want answered? So these are the questions. These are my answers. Let's do it. Tana asks, who is your favorite Ninja Turtle and why? And my answer is, of course, Venus de Milo. Yeah, that's right. You thought I was going to go for one of the original four. Nah, I'm going for the deep cut, the next mutation. Nah, I'm kidding. That show was awful. <laughs> it's Raphael, obviously, because he's the cool one. And when you're a kid growing up, you want to be the cool one. You want to be Raphael. Granted, Leonardo leads and Donatello does machines, but Raphael is cool and rude. Just found out after 30, 35 years that it's cool but rude. I always thought it was cool but crude. There you go. And Michelangelo is a party dude, which will probably get irritating after a while. So yeah, Raphael wins hands down. Tristan asks, which are your favorite and least favorite repaints? And this is one that I thought might be a bit difficult to answer, but actually there's a couple that spring to mind very quickly. One hasn't even been released yet, and that is the Webman Spider-Man. I was at first thinking, oh gosh, I don't want to have to buy this. This is kind of lame. And then I realized, oh wait, I don't. Because especially, I mean, look, I don't have to buy anything, but specifically, I try to just buy 616. Webman ain't 616. So therefore, I don't need to have him in my collection. And I'm glad because it is just a palette swap, but not even a good palette swap. Like the blue is kind of a turquoisey looking blue. It just, it looks kind of weird. And I don't really have any affection for the character. I mean, I've never read the issue that he appears in. It's kind of a goofy, silly kind of a story. So yeah, I don't need that in my life. But best repaints? Easy. First one off the top of my head, Retro Mysterio. Ah, they just took the original Mysterio and then changed exactly what I would have wanted changed. They put on the gold, they gave a nice wash on the green. Ah, chef's kiss, mwah, beautiful figure. Aroha Action Figure Customs asks, what is best in life? And <laughs> I think we can all agree the answer is obvious. To crush your YouTube enemies, see their subscribers driven away and hear the lamentations of their women. Good times. Aiden asks, what is your favorite Star Wars movie? And this is a good one because I have a huge amount of affection for the original Star Wars trilogy, but all the others, like pretty much everything after that, I'm not, I'm not a fan. And I accept that there is good stuff in there, but I just couldn't get on board with it. So the original trilogy easily is like where the heart is. And actually it has to be Return of the Jedi for me. Growing up as a kid, I always say growing up as a kid, you don't grow up as an adult. You grow up as a kid, so that kind of is a bit redundant. But Jedi, it had the most action, the most fun. I think that, you know, being only about seven or eight years old when I, when I saw it, that was what I wanted. I appreciate that now, you know, people see it as the weaker of the original trilogy. Empire has the dark storytelling and the original is just that. It's the original. It sets the standard and it's wonderful. But Jedi, it has Muppets and Jabba and Boba Fett and the huge space battles again. And even as a kid, I wasn't a fan of the Ewoks, but I still loved all the adventure on Endor. Easily, easily, Jedi for me is my absolute nostalgic favorite. And then episode seven destroyed everything about it and turned out that um, Jedi was not a happy ending and the bad guys kind of won. Go figure. LJ, Gears, Figures and Customs asks, which is your most prized figure in your collection or which group of your collection is your most prized? And for me, Easily, hands down, my most prized or favorite figure is my custom of Spider-Side. Such a ridiculous, random, obscure character, but I love that character. And more to the point, I love the amount of work and effort and artistry that went into making the custom. The guy who made it is a good buddy of mine, and the fact that it's got that kind of personal connection, plus that we assumed it was lost, that it took about nine months to be delivered, 
is just crazy. So there's a cool story behind him as well. And spiraling off from that, my favorite kind of of figures has to be my essential golden age Spider-Man. So Spider-Man and his Sinister Six and the supporting cast, those are my absolute favorite figures. Zayan Extreme Wrestling asks, are you into DC? And honestly, nah, not really. And I can never fully put my finger on it because I accept that DC has like as many fans as Marvel, at least as far as comics are concerned. And I don't know why I just never really gravitated to DC. I always felt like the characters were less relatable. Marvel always feels more like real our world type characters. Their New York feels like our New York. They feel like people that you would meet at a Starbucks or bump into Captain America, Spider-Man. They all feel like people that you would, that would exist in your real world. Whereas DC always feels more fantastical. It feels more fairy tale. Gotham City, there's no Gotham City. You know, Metropolis, there's not, nothing quite like that. Your Superman being like Clark Kent is all, it's a bit, it's a bit hyper realistic. It's not the real world that we kind of live in. And that kind of detaches me from it. And I never really latched onto DC. EMT dioramas doesn't have so much of a question as a full topic to discuss. So I'm going to try and whittle this down to the essentials. And he's asking, how do you feel about the extra Peter Parkers, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield being brought into Spider-Man 3? Do you think it's fair that Tom Holland doesn't get his own solo Spider-Man without Tony Stark in there? And I totally get that. First of all, I'm actually really happy because I like the idea of this multiverse. I read the Spider-Verse stories that came out over the last few years. So Spider-Verse as a concept of the different Spider-Men, that's actually really fun to me. And I'd love to see Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man get a conclusion, basically. I mean, same goes for Andrew Garfield, really. Both of those series ended kind of on a... Eh, you know, they both finished with the expectation of sequels that ne never came. Even though Tobey Maguire had a trilogy, clearly things were not wrapped up at the end of that. And Andrew Garfield, it was just cut off in the middle because the second one was so awful. So I'm glad that they're getting a, a do-over, basically. The same with Jamie Foxx. He gets to have another go at Electro and do it right. This feels like we had with Deadpool, where Ryan Reynolds, he gets a second go at the character. So I really like that. But similarly, I am disappointed that we still don't have a proper, what I consider, Sony Spider-Man solo movie. I think Tom Holland is great, but as a lot of people have said, it feels like Iron Man Jr. You could swap out the Spider-Man costume with an Iron Man suit and everything plays out exactly the same. It's not Spider-Man. It's not the Spider-Man that I want to see. So there's good stuff there. But I really hope that this third part of the trilogy will wrap up this first arc and then we can move forward with Spider-Man and Mary Jane. They can go to college. We can have like a more grown-up adult Spider-Man who is going out on his own, doing his own thing without all of the multiverse stuff, all of the Tony Stark shield stuff, just Spider-Man being Spider-Man. That's what I hope we get in future movies. Infirmus asks a few questions, one being, what is your guilty pleasure toys or action figure line that people might not realize you collect? And honestly, nothing actually stands out to me as a guilty pleasure. You know, I've got Storm collectibles, I've got Marvel Legends, some NECA, some McFarlane. So really, it's kind of funny, rather than having a line that I collect that people might be surprised about, I think the biggest surprise is the line that I don't collect, which is pro wrestling figures. Because I'm such a huge pro wrestling fan, people are always like, oh, are you gonna get the new AEW figures? And I'm always like, I just don't get pro wrestling figures. And I think the big part for that, and this is a really weird one actually, is that because I used to be a, a, a wrestler and I used to do wrestling, <laughs> if that's something you do. But because of that, I've always had a problem like, like buying merchandise and feeling like, basically that there's a frustrated wrestler in me who will never be on wrestling merchandise, who will never have an action figure made of him. And I, I there's something that kind of just doesn't gravitate. I, I don't, I don't like it. I, I'm like, ah, I was never actually that action figure I wanted to be. I don't want to be collecting someone else's. It's weird, I know, but that's just a thing. Plus also, I cannot afford <laughs> to get another line of, of figures. If I started getting AEW, I know I would want all the AEW figures. And where the heck am I going to put those? 
Infirmus also asks, which toy line do you think is the best right now? And that's a difficult one because everyone has their own opinions and they, they are different things that different toy manufacturers do. I think the Fortnite figures, are they Hasbro? I think they might be Hasbro, I'm not sure, but the Fortnite figures are excellent. I kind of wish that I played Fortnite or had any kind of connection to them because I would kind of like to get some, but I don't have any, I, I don't know who's who, I have no idea about anything with regards to that. But when I see the figures, they look like really good quality, great accessories, really cool designs, bizarre, but really great fun. So I think as a little shout out, if it is Hasbro or whichever company are doing the Fortnite figures, those are pretty cool. Boss is here asks, bro, how many action figures do you own? And honestly, dude, I have no idea. Lots, but actually not that many. When you consider how many a lot of like hardcore collectors have, I don't have that many. I mean, <laughs> they're bursting at the seams here, but honestly, yeah, compared to a lot of other like really hardcore collectors who've been going for years, it's not that crazy. It's still pretty crazy. Captain Calitron asks, will you be doing collaborations with other YouTube creators? And yeah, I think I've kind of answered that with the last few videos I've done. I'm always happy to work with other creators as long as they are people who I can steal some uh, success or fame, ideally take some of their subscribers, then I'll definitely be happy to work with them. If they're smaller than me, then no, I won't waste my time. <laughs> I'm kidding. Honestly, I, I love working with people. I love collaborating. I love sharing ideas. And I love just, just kind of connecting. It sounds kind of cheesy, but I do. So, you know, I've recently worked with uh, Ash uh, Super Sorrel. We did a great live stream together. I've done some collaborations with uh, Matt Nerdzoic, both of those guys, super cool. And actually there's tons of people. I used to do a few segments where I would ask different creators to chime in. So I've done a lot of crossovers and I would like to do a whole lot more. So YouTube creators, get in touch. Brain Nor asks, who is your favorite Mortal Kombat character? And for me, that has always been Sub-Zero. From the very first game, I just thought the Ice Ninja was badass. So I would always main him whenever I was playing the games. But I gotta say, being a Bruce Lee fan growing up, Liu Kang was always very cool. I never really liked him in the first game. I thought his character model looked a bit naff. But then from two, three onwards, Liu Kang was pretty badass. And as a recent character, I think Aaron Black is very cool. You don't get many cowboys in fantasy stories outside of just, you know, Wild West type stuff. So Aaron Black is a more modern favorite character. And then, uh, then of course, we've got Robocop as DLC and Terminator. I mean, Come on, Mortal Kombat, you spoil us. Harry asks, is Marvel your favorite franchise? And yeah, that's an easy answer. I mean, that's the thing that dominates all of my interest with regards to comic books and comic book movies and action figures. Totally, Marvel is the overwhelming favorite that I grew up with as a kid. And then there's things like, you know, is pro wrestling a franchise? Not really, but is it something I follow? Yes, absolutely. But if we're talking creative franchises like comic books and action figures, then totally, Marvel as a whole is the one that I focus on above and beyond all others, I'd say. Art by the Anomaly asks, if money was completely disposable, what figure line would you jump onto collecting if you didn't have to worry about how much it would cost to catch up? And I think a few months ago that, that answer would be Mortal Kombat by Storm. But uh, yeah, kind of did that. Uh, although I would love the original ninjas. So if money wasn't an object, I would get those original ninjas. But also, a line that I keep seeing and I'm like, ah, oh, I do like it, is a lot of the DC Dark Knight, uh, what is it, uh, Dark Metal Batman figures. I would love to have all the evil Batman, the Batman who laughs, the Green Lantern one, the Drowned, the Murder Machine, like those are all really cool. But unfortunately, McFarlane do what Hasbro do, which is the Build-A-Figure concept. So I know that if I want to get all of those, I think Devastator, uh, is a builder figure, so I'd have to buy a whole wave of DC characters that I don't know or care about. It would be even worse than doing it for Marvel Legends, because at least Marvel, I have that Marvel connection. For DC, I'm like, I don't even care about these characters, and I gotta buy them just to get Devastator's leg. 
Nah, I'm out. But if money was no object, yeah, I'd go ham and get those. Collector117 asks, will you ever venture into the hot toys collecting? And dude, I'm already there, my brother. I've got a whole bunch of hot toys, but that's actually it. I don't need any more. I've decided that six, seven inch, that's the sweet spot. Hot toys, I I, I, I love the ones I've got, but I, I keep considering selling because I'm like, they actually just kind of collect a bit of dust. They don't feature as much as, I just don't get so much looking at them. But I've got, I've got two Terminators, I've got two Robocops, I've got an alien, I've got a Predator, and I kind of love them, but at the same time, I'm like, they just don't hit that sweet spot. So I have to admit, if I needed to liquidate some capital, they might be the first to go. Tiger Rap asks, what is your favorite Marvel legend in the Spider-Man retro line? And that is tough because, oh, that's such a good line. The retro Spider-Man himself is great. If he had an unmasked Peter Parker head, that would have pushed him over the top as just like perfection, but wasn't the case. I love the Mysterio, but he is just a repaint, but gosh, he's such a good repaint. It might be Mysterio, but then again, of course, the Kingpin, I'm looking up at him now. The Kingpin Deluxe figure, ah, that's really awesome too. You know what, my biggest hope is that we haven't seen my favorite retro release yet. I still want to see a new Rhino. We got the Sandman announced and I'm like, eh, I might pick him up, but I've got the Baffa and I think the Baffa is still superior. But if they did a really cool new version of Rhino or Lizard or even like an Alistair Smythe or a Spider Slayer, I think that hopefully my favorite retro release hasn't been announced yet. Ammo2Go asks, which video game franchise would you like to see Storm Collectibles make figures of next? And that's a really, really good question. First of all, they need to finish Streets of Rage. At least I need Blaze to go with my Axel, because Axel Stone is one of my favorite, favorite figures. So they haven't announced or teased any more Streets of Rage figures, so I'm worried that maybe that didn't sell very well, because I really want to at least get Blaze to go with Axel. But for a whole new franchise, I was giving it some thought, and I think actually a really fun one would be Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim was one of my favorites in the 90s growing up, playing that on the Mega Drive or Genesis, if you will. And those figure designs are so wacky and bizarre and crazy, they would translate so well to Storm Collectibles. And there have been Earthworm Jim figures in the past, like more sort of low-end ones, I think. Not low-end, if you know what I mean, but just not like the crazy, you know, high-end type ones. But I would love to see Earthworm Jim, Princess What's-Her-Name, Psycho. Bob the Killer Goldfish, Evil the Cat. I think they would do an amazing job with those and that would be a really fun line to collect. Comrade asks a very interesting question about the life cycle of figures. Basically asking, have you ever had to sell off figures when you hit hard times? And hey, we've all experienced hard times, baby. But how do you feel about the life cycle of collecting? How long do you plan to be doing this? Or is there an end game in sight or anything like, like that? I kind of paraphrased as you can tell. First of all, I've, touch wood, never had to sell off figures because of hard times. But that doesn't mean that I don't have any kind of intention to if I need to. Whenever I look at my figure collection, I kind of see it as, okay, it's not an investment because I'm not one of those crazy people who's like, ah, I'm going to retire on this. No, you, you won't. But I do see like, if I want to go and travel the world, like if I can finally go to Hong Kong and go and stay with my girlfriend for a few months, I won't be able to work. But what I will do is probably have a few figures boxed up and ready to go. And then I can just sell them on eBay and, you know, get someone to take them to the post office for me. So I do have figures in mind that I'm like, if I need money, then will be the first to go. Probably the hot toys for that matter. But for like a long term sort of thing, hey, I'm here for the long term. I don't think I'll ever stop collecting at this point. Unless I have some kind of Road to Damascus style conversion and I'm like, that's it, I don't wanna collect anything anymore. I want all of this out of my house. I wanna live like a monk. Then heck, maybe I will do. Maybe I'll just go mad and give them all to charity and then go live in the woods. Ah, that sounds bonkers. That's such a thing I would do. Bearded Toy Guy asks, are you Doug Jones's brother? And you can imagine, I get this a lot. Or maybe you can't imagine, but trust me, I get that a lot. Everyone, the biggest comparisons are Doug Jones, Will Arnett, David Tennant, and a skinny Henry Cavill, which is bonkers. Look at me, I'm jacked. But okay, I'm not Superman. 
So yeah, the, <laughs> those are the, are the big four. Henry Cavill is definitely the most flattering. Will Arnett is probably the most realistic. And uh, yeah, I, I take those as compliments. They're, they're all very successful people. Would kind of like to emulate them more with my bank account than my looks, but there you go. Lewis Action Figures asks a big question, so I'm gonna read it off here. He says, since we are celebrating Pride Month, I wanted to ask how you feel about overall representation and sexism in comics and merchandising. What changes do you feel brands and fans alike should implement to better make our community, oh, to make our community better? Personally, I'm tired of seeing YouTube reviewers making comments about female action figures' bodies while making a review. That's a really big question. And basically to sum it up quick or tie a, a bow, I think it's great that figures are being made more realistically or different shapes and sizes and whatnot. I'm all for that. At the same time, I'm someone who actually, I like the aspirational look of superheroes. I think probably growing up in the 80s and having He-Man and pro wrestling and all that kind of thing and Schwarzenegger, I'm, I'm someone who I appreciate my action stars to look like action stars. And that goes for men and, and women. And whether or not that's kind of like the most politically correct, it probably isn't. I was someone who was watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier and I was really disappointed when they threw out that line saying like, oh yeah, we've perfected the super soldier serum so it doesn't make you all big and muscly anymore. I'm like, well, that's just because you don't want to get people all like jacked up and maybe you shouldn't. We shouldn't be putting those expectations on people anymore, but I'm a child of the 80s and 90s. I've been raised on Rob Liefeld pictures <laughs> and had my little mind warped with that. So, you know, I like some of the lowest common denominator type things. I, I like, you know, curves and legs and big muscles and all those kinds of ridiculous over the top tropes that we probably are moving away from. So I will be the first person to actually say, you know what? Maybe my time has come and gone of those things that, that I think are, you know, good for action figures or comic book characters. We probably should do away with them. And I get it. I accept it. Like, if someone made, say, for example, a G Grey figure and it was, like, big and busty and sort of had unrealistic proportions, I'd be like, <laughs> cool, that's going to look fun on my shelf. But I would also appreciate the fact that that's probably not what we should be doing. And that, you know, when we do get a, a figure who's got more of a sort of realistic physique, that's actually better, represent better representative of people. But then again, superheroes aren't people. They're superheroes. It's, it's tough. But then should we be implying that in order to be a super person, you need big tits? I don't know. Where are we going with that? What I'm saying is I'm, I'm flexible, you know. I know what I like, but it's probably lowest common denominator. So that's why you'll never see me going, no, I don't like the fact that this, this, this Storm figure doesn't have big hips and large breasts. That's not me because that, that's not how I roll. But I might be thinking in my head, it'd be nice if she had bigger boobs. But, you know, I'm just being honest. That's, that's who I am. If the industry is moving away from that, I'm all for it because <laughs> we need to be better people. Maybe I need to be a better person. Jake asks the very good question of how are you making a living during this unemployed time? And yeah, it's been getting to the stage where I've been wondering that too. I was supposed to go and start a whole new life and a whole new job in Beijing a couple of months ago. That fell through. So I've been, I was stuck for a while. But actually I've been started off, I started off doing some just temp work, uh, helping out with giving COVID tests and I was working in the pub for a little bit. And now I'm actually working with my brother-in-law uh, being a landscape gardener. So that's actually kind of cool. I'm working as a landscape gardener and when uh, business picks up in the entertainment industry, hopefully I'll be the, right there to jump back into it. But in the meantime, I'm actually really digging being a landscaper and it's keeping me in action figures. So I'm pretty happy with that. Toys and Thoughts asks, would you create your own supervillain team and who would be on it and what type of team would it be? Whew, boy, that is a huge mouthful of a question and you're kind of putting me on the spot there, even though I'm putting myself on the spot because I'm doing this live to tape. But I don't know. I'm not a supervillainous person, I don't think. I think maybe my, <laughs> my, the most villainous thing I probably do is the fact that I don't do enough. I see things happening. I'm, I'm that classic sort of middle class type person where I'm like, oh, I feel so bad for the horrors in the world. Well, do you want to do something about it, Dave? Uh, not really. So yeah, my villain team would be the apathetics. We'd be the people who see the terrible things happening and be like, ah, oh, we, we should, that's not on. 
that we should we should do something about that. Well, well, what? Well, is there like an online petition or something we can sign? Or uh, even then, they've got to log on. They're gonna they're gonna get your details. Then they're gonna send you spam. And uh, uh, well, still, I hope that situation improves. That would be that would be my supervillain team, the Apathetics. Martin Fantastic asks. Would you be tempted to join the cloth side and start collecting figures that have cloth goods? And I've got to admit, I'm still torn about the Mezco Wolverine. I don't think I like cloth, cloth clothes. I just, I don't. But at the same time, that Wolverine does look kind of cool. But it's a big chunk of change to ask for a single figure that I might not like, but I don't know until I get him in hand. His diorama base looks cool. Maybe I might still bite on Mezco Wolverine and who knows, once I get him, maybe I'll fall down the cloth rabbit hole, but I doubt it. MG Man Cave says, I've pinched your technique of using tin cans as risers in my displays. However, they still smell a little bit funky after washing them. How do you get rid of that? And that's a very, very good question, especially if you use tuna cans. And I'm kind of lucky that we have a dishwasher at home, which is, you know, it's incredibly hot. And that's the key, hot, hot, hot water. If I put the tuna cans in the dishwasher, they come out gleaming. You'd never know that they had disgusting, horrible tuna fish in them. Tuna's gross. But if you don't have a dishwasher, then that's exactly what I would say is, boiling hot water, lots of soap and dishwasher liquid, leave them in that for a few hours or overnight, that should get rid of the food smell and then you won't have a, a funky smelling toy collection. Com asks, what are your thoughts on Medicom Mafex? And I don't really have many. I don't have any Mafex toys at all. So I don't have too big of a list of feelings about them. Wow, that was a garbled answer. They look cool, but they don't look that different from Marvel Legends, in my opinion, to be honest. They look better. They, they do look like there's more quality in them, but I, I don't see it as such a leap of quality that I would think, oh, I have to collect these guys instead of Legends because I can't see that much of a difference. Maybe if I had them in hand, I'd be like, oh, wow, these like kick ass. But just from seeing pictures on the internet, I don't feel that it's something I really need to dive into. But a lot of people like them, so hey, there's got to be something said for them. But yeah, me, myself, I can't say too much. It Action Figures asks, what was your first action figure? And geez, man, like if we're going way, way, way back in the way, way back machine, like He-Man, I suppose. But I'm not sure if you mean from the current collection. So from the current collection that, that I have, it would be the Ben Riley Spider-Man, which my girlfriend at the time bought for me in Japan. And I was like, oh my God, they have made a Ben Riley sensational Spider-Man figure. I must own this. And she was like, I gotcha. So that was the first Marvel legend that kicked everything off. And then, yeah, I suppose also He-Man and the original Kenner Star Wars figures from the 80s. Those were how it all started, but goodness only knows what happened to them. Customs Watcher asks, movies I wish would get a figure line. And again, that's a really good question because so many great movies have their figure lines already. NECA just keep busting out amazing action figures and uh, horror movie figures. So when thinking what movies I desperately want, I think, well, what hasn't been covered yet, you know? But then I thought, okay, there's a couple. And the main one, and this is with a caveat, of course, is Robocop. Because yes, we have Robocop figures, but no one's quite cracked it. You know, it has been like, about 12, 13 years since we actually just had a basic seven inch Robocop. McFarlane Toys made one, NECA made one a while ago, it was Robocop 3, but really a definitive seven inch Robocop, I still feel we need. And if we could do a whole line, oh my God, could you imagine? You can have two Robocops, you can have classic Robocop, you know, battle damaged Robocop, or you can have like Robocop 2 with more of a blue sheen. Imagine if they got like a NECA style licensing deal where they could do the actors likenesses. So you could, you could have Alex Murphy and Lewis, you could have Clarence Bodica, you could have a melting Emil, you could have Kane from Robocop 2, you could have Ed 209. There's so many cool things you could do with a full line of Robocop figures. I would love to see that. 
Arby's Comics asks, how do you focus your collection? As in movies, TV, comics? I think you mean like maybe how do I arrange them? Uh, because that's always difficult for me. I'm gonna do a full display video in the next day or two. But I try with my Marvel Legends to kind of do them chronologically. So I'll have my kind of core Marvel Universe, Golden Age, Stan Lee, Kirby characters, then like branching out, 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 out to the more, more, more sort of recent ones. And it kind of sort of works. I'll talk you guys through it in a couple of days and you can see if I'm even close to getting it right. Then of course, I've got my Mortal Kombat ones behind me. So they're all in a world of their own. Next to Mortal Kombat, I've got my NECA Turtles because Turtles have a bit of a Mortal Kombat Nether Realms connection because they've been DLC characters. But I will never be fully satisfied basically However I distribute things or mix them up, I'll always probably look at it and go, still not quite right. Rob asks, do you think we will ever get any more MCU War Machine armors? And I can't imagine we would do. Are we missing any? I'm not a big MCU collector, so maybe there's one that slipped through the cracks that I'm not aware of. Because I know that we have the big, chunky Iron Patriot War Machine from Endgame. So is that the most recent one? I'm not entirely sure. So maybe someone who's more au fait with MCU figures could tell me because I think we're up to date. But since you're asking that question, I'm guessing we're probably not. And guys, that does it for the second quarterly Q&A session of 2021. Thank you so much, everyone who submitted questions. And there is one more that I still have to answer, which was nominated to me by a fellow creator. He asked me to make a video, why do I collect action figures? And to be honest, I started recording my answer and after rambling for ages, I thought, this is terrible. This isn't worth releasing as a video. I'm making no sense. So I'm gonna stick it on the end of this. So if you want to see me desperately try to explain why I collect action figures, then now you can do. So I'm gonna leave this as the final section. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior. Hey there guys, so why do I collect action figures? Well, I'm glad you asked. This question was posed to me by my buddy Matt over at Nerdzoic, great action figure channel, go check it out. And that made me think, wait, why do I collect all of these things? Because Lord knows I have a lot of them. And the simple answer is because it hits me on a personal DNA type level. The same reason why some folks are obsessed with football or crocheting, I don't know, stuff that other people enjoy. I don't know about it, quite frankly. I don't want to. I'm doing action figures and pro wrestling and comic books. And what's the thing that ties all of these together? fantasy, creativity, oh, just everything that you can kind of imagine and aspire to when you're surrounded by a world that you feel a little bit disconnected from. Yeah, this guy. I think that this is not escape because I've never wanted to escape, but I've wanted to imagine things that are greater, bigger than what we are surrounded by. I had a real kind of problem when I was a kid where I just didn't understand sort of why people got so pent up and upset about things that I thought like, this isn't worth getting upset about. Just, you know, relax and kind of go with the flow. And that was what I couldn't understand because I think I wasn't a sports person. So, you know, I would never understand why people got crazy excited or very, very sad about uh, a game or similarly why people would get angry or violent about road rage or something that I was like well, I don't understand why why is this a thing I needed something that was more dramatic in my life and that's where pro wrestling and comics and action figures that personify those things came from so I was a kid playing with Ninja Turtles and Transformers and He-Man and it wasn't just playing but it was role playing you put yourself into these characters and that's why I think I became an actor because I have this natural proclivity to want to embody these characters and really create a life and a universe around them and that's why these memories stick with me in such a strong strong way so the same reason that I loved that pro wrestling was an extension of the real world, but a more fantastical one where things aren't so kind of basic and humdrum, but in fact, it's all about life and death and good and evil and gods and monsters and, you know, the overcoming of the hero. That was something that I absolutely adored. And I wanted to recreate that in my real world because I, I thought, oh my goodness, as a kid, I had this realization that the world can't be this kind of 
basic, can it? And I wanted something that was more, and that's why I became a pro wrestler. I was always very tall and athletic for my age, but I was never into sports, so it didn't really sort of resonate with me. I didn't care about beating the other team. Why do I want to beat them? They're nice folks. Why do I want to score more goals? I don't have that ego. But I wanted to fantasize and create something more, something that was involving imagination and creativity. And that's why I love pro wrestling, because I could create a new character, a new persona that was different to my everyday one. And that's what I loved to do. And similarly, I would take all the inspiration from comic books, from cartoons, from all the things that I'd grown up, and I could pour them into this creative endeavor. And action figures just physically personify this creativity and my goodness the first time I remember being in a hobby shop and I was surrounded by all these model kits of they were mainly horror movie figures like Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger and I was like oh wow these look insane and kind of scary because I'm a little kid but I really wanted them then I saw they were, they were model kits and I was like I don't have the time or the patience or the talent to learn how to do this I just want to have them ready made flash forward 35 years and Lo and behold, we pretty much would do. But that was where it always kind of hit me, was in the creativity. And then I just have a collector's mentality. That's definitely a generational thing. My dad is a collector. We just, we, we don't hoard, but we do collect. It's like, oh, if I've got one other thing, I really got to have all the rest of these things. And that is deadly, especially with Marvel Legends. But that's where it really came from, was I loved the world around me, but I didn't find it exciting, inspiring, you know, because I wouldn't get inspired by various other sort of things that maybe other people do, like, you know, amazing sporting achievements or uh, uh, beautiful sunsets are inspiring. But more to the point, you know, Ben Riley sacrificing himself to save Peter Parker. That's inspiring. Bret Hart standing up to Yokozuna, even though he was outweighed by like 250 pounds and was the underdog. That's inspiring. And that's why I love action figures, because they capture and personify these moments. I got Prime and Megatron behind me. That is good versus evil. That is a great Shakespearean dramatic story, and it's personified in plastic. And when you look at them, you don't just see characters. You see all the emotions and imagination that you poured into and invested into these characters. And I see 40 years of story as well and that's the big thing when you have a character you get say a new release of modok it's not just a little plastic action figure it's personifying 40 50 however old modok's character is 60 years nah not that old either way it's personifying all these years of story and law and creativity and that's what i love is the law and the details and everything that goes into these figures a simple figure that i'll look at Bishop, oh my goodness, I'm looking at, uh, at the figure of Bishop. I see that, I think of the X-Men animated cartoon. I think of Days of Future Past. I think of all the comics that he's appeared in and it's just, there's so much to it. All of these characters are so rich and complex that when I see an action figure of them, I'm like, that's 50, 60 years worth of story and all these memories come pouring back and that's amazing. Same with Mortal Kombat behind me. I don't just see a nice looking action figure and let's face it, they do look really nice. But I see time spent in the arcade as a, as a kid. I see times going to the bowling alley with my dad and watching folks play on Mortal Kombat 2. And those sense memories come flooding back into you when you see these action figures, when you pose them, when you display them. And oh my goodness, the dopamine hit when they arrive. Oof, that's also quite nice as well. Just waiting for the postman with bated breath. So there's so much that goes into the love and appreciation of these figures. And you can imagine the way I'm saying with the Venn diagram of wrestling comic books, action figures, it all crosses over into what is essentially a creative love, you know, a, a joy for imagination and stories. That's the thing, stories and characters. And that's why I will generally only buy action figures, generally, only buy action figures of characters that I really have a strong connection with, that I remember because they represent the stories that I know as well. And that's why I dig these guys so much. That's why I dig these ones behind me and that's why I dig the 
are innumerable <laughs> ones that I will probably be buying throughout the years and I will love every moment of collecting. And now that I'm older and doing this channel as well, it's not just the figures, but it's the community that's built up around this. This is something that I never imagined when I just sat down to film a little Ghost Rider video for some of the folks on my Facebook group that I would end up being a part of such an awesome community of people with feedback and interests and passions and opinions and things that you can share and relate to. It's a real joy and that then encourages reciprocally my love for the action figures that spawn all of that. So folks, in about five minutes, that is why I collect action figures and I hope you have enjoyed it. I know I've certainly enjoyed the process. So guys, thanks for listening and until next time, keep displaying model behavior.